Hello one and all, this is Hybrid Steel, thank you very much for joining me in today's Valheim video. Today we're going to be talking about the meadow biome, and the reason why is because, well, you know, it's good to have a chat about what you can actually find from a person and not just reading text. So, what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about the meadow, here we go. So first off, what you're going to need to know about the meadow. Number one, stone, needs stone. Wood, needs wood. When you first start this game, you're going to be looking at basically building as quickly as possible. The best ways to get stone and wood is number one, to be finding it on the floor, like stone, like this. Or wood, it can be in the forest. So in the little forest sections, there might be branches laying around on the floor, like this one over here. A branch. Now, if you don't want that and you want to get and you want to sort of like punch a couple of things, punch these saplings. Saplings are easier to take down than any other anything else. And if you eventually do get around to having yourself a little stone axe, take out stumps and logs laying in the floor. And the reason why is because they're easier to take out. You won't get as much, but they're easier to get like you know material to start with. Straight up, do that. There are two types of wood in the meadow biome to start with. Number one, the beech tree. This is a beech tree. Beech tree, it just gives you standard wood planks, okay? That's all you're going to be using. But in fairness, when you're right at the beginning of the game, wood is pretty much needed. So chop down any tree that's near you. Personally, I prefer to build it in an area like this, because then you can see enemies coming towards you. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's all good. Okay, so the other type of wood is fine wood. And now we get from a birch tree. So that's a silver birch. And that is an oak tree. Now, when you're in the meadows, these two trees are the hardest ones to chop down. You're going to need yourself a bronze axe. Now, bronze axe can be made from tin and copper, melded together in the forge. And then from there, you basically make your own bronze axe and you're able to chop these trees down, which is good. Fine wood itself is very high quality wood for fine carpentry and for making a few little extras as well, like bows. So there's a fine wood bow that does a little bit of decent damage. Next, we're going to be talking about food. Food is is an abundance in the meadows. And the reason why is because they don't want you to starve in the first couple of days of the game. So food consists of neck, which are these little green lizard things. So chop these two apart. Uh, by the way, I am using mods for this so I can show you what to do and uh, actually have a chat with you. So necks are your food source and boar is a food source and deer is a food source. Likelihood is I can't find a deer because they do run away quite a lot. And I'm not really to chase one down just for this guide. But deer and a food source. Now when you do kill a boar or a deer you are given raw meat. Now raw meat has to be cooked on a fire. Uh, what you do is you unlock the hammer as you would go through the game. And then you unlock the cooking station. This has to be put onto an open fire, which is under misc. So you make an open fire, then you go to build, and then you go to crafting. And then you put a cooking station over, and then you can cook your meat and your neck tails. Now, neck tails are another food source which don't count as the same food source as raw meat. So all already, we have two versions of food straight away. The next source of food you're going to be looking at is berries. Now, the reason why you're looking for berries is because it's another food source. And if you have three food sources in your inventory all at one time, you can then have your three little squares down there in the bottom right hand in the bottom left hand corner. Those three squares represent your three meals that are in yours. And that basically boosts your health bar to 100 percent of whatever 100 percent is at this time. Later on, as you go through the game, obviously your health point, you're going to need more health. The better food qualities you make is better for you. There is another type of food that is in the meadow, and that is a mushroom. Now, in order to fight, there's a mushroom. Hey, <laughs> first time I found one quite quickly. Okay, so this is a mushroom. Yay. Mushrooms can be found within the wooded area. I've never really found one in an open area before, but, you know, I suppose it can happen. But the idea is that if you go slightly into the forest section of the uh, meadow, you'll be able to find a mushroom. And a mushroom is an edible thing that will get, basically give you a little bit of a stamina increase, your health increase, and it will help you survive. Next, you're going to be looking for random encounters. Now, these random encounters are, well, this is what I call a random encounter, but it's when you find these buildings just laying around now these buildings can be done quickly to remove like the wood and bits and pieces you may need to uh, like to build with and it's a good way of actually getting resources straight away so what you would do with this is you would bring up your hammer you bring a crafting table into the game uh, go over into your building get the smallest object and then just take everything apart and there you go you've got wood supply and you can take this apart use it on your own base all good all right so that's just another way of uh, earning materials before you even bother. Another thing you got to watch out for, though, is uh, beehives. Now, beehives, I can't show you one because I, th I don't think there is one laying around. But we'll go and check this house just in case. 
sometimes they're in the, sometimes they're in the back sometimes they're... okay so we got lucky with this one so this is a beehive now beehives you have to destroy them to get the honey and the queen bee out and when you get the queen bee out it means you can build your own beehive back at your base and beehives basically use for making mead which is a good thing it means you get another source of well another source of something you can use to up your health bar next are uh, stone circles now, if you are lucky enough to find a stone circle within your area, uh, you can dig into it and it will come up as a treasure. Or what you can do is wait until you kill bone mass. And when you kill bone mass, you get the wishbone. And the wishbone basically lets you sort of like find treasure. Uh, so it will just sort of highlight wherever you're running around. It'll be like, hey, there's something here and you go digging for it. Most of these things can be found in like stone circles or um, near graves, that sort of thing. So you, they are they are things that you have to look for. This is a grave, but it's not coming up with anything. I would love to find one. Let's put it this way and show you. But always keep your eyes out. Uh, the inf there is information about what these things actually look like. The rewards are fairly basic for like uh, later on findings. But right at the beginning, it's quite handy to find. So if you do find like a stone circle or a Viking burial area, yeah, always keep an eye out on them because they, you just dig down into it. So you will need the pickaxe for it or the antler axe. Dig into the ground one or two layers and look in and it's all good. So as you do go through this game, and this is a warning to you, when you first start, it's not too hard to survive here. Most of the time your enemies consist of a wild boar, which are those things over there a neck which is that thing over there because they're aggressive animals also what will also happen is that you'll get attacked occasionally from graylings graylings are quite easy to take out you can punch them in the face they go down quite happily but later on when you killed the first and the second boss the enemies in the area actually do get harder so take note of that and make sure that your base is well protected i always find when you're actually building stuff you want to build the if you've got like a gateway uh, or a doorway of getting into your base put down the sharp stakes so you know they're there and then obviously when you're coming in jump over the stakes it keeps the enemies away a little bit and that's just a hint but yeah later on the, the even the meadow turns into a little bit of a dangerous place not as dangerous as like the the dark forest or the swamplands or anywhere like that but yeah, you do get attacked a bit more when you've gone through the game a little bit. Another thing you can get in the meadow section and they're seagulls. Uh, seagulls basically fly around randomly. They land in random places. You can never really control them, but it's always good if you find one. And if you do find one, um, you have to use a bow on it. They do. They do. They tend to like fly away quite quickly. But they're a good source of picking up feathers. Now feathers are obviously used for making arrows. Uh, you can get feathers out of cutting down trees, but again, this is sort of one. It's one of those things that occasionally happens. You have to be very lucky. So always make sure you've got some sort of like way of getting feathers out because, you know, killing seagulls is an easy way to do it. Chopping down trees is a sort of luck way of doing it. So when you're making your stone axes and bits and pieces, you may find some of these kicking about. Now, they may look like pills or like a giant like creature eggs. But if you pick it up, it is a different material for you to craft with. Basically, with a flint, uh, with flint, if you pick up enough of this, you can build your flint axes, flint arrow tips, and a flint spear, I believe the other one is. But yeah, it's a very good thing to be picking up right at the beginning. If you're just working on stone and you build up a collection of flint, it does mean you're going to have a very good start into the flint tooling as well. Another decent thing to be looking out for when you're actually in the meadow. In the meadow section is a draugr. Now, if you haven't got that far in the game, a draugr or draugr, depending on how you pronounce it and everything else, is basically a zombified viking. These things are pretty nasty, but in, they only really happen like you, it's a rarity to find them in early stage of the game but they can it can happen the game does a very good job of trying to keep you safe to start with apart from like going up against the odd grayling now apart from that you will you can find draugas later on or draugas now if you do find them run away i mean they're not very fast but i've got to be honest at the beginning of the game you will die if you come up against one and it's not worth trying to get your stuff back so if you do see like an abandoned village try to sort of stay farther away if it's just like one or two building like that one building in the distance if it's just like one building it's not normally too bad if it's an entire village usually that means it's it's probably like populated 
just watch out okay there is one other thing that you can get in the meadow that it's a flower and that is these dandelion uh, dandelion is basically a, a flower obviously we all know what a dandelion is but in this game it's used as a it's a crafting tool you can use them later on when you're creating like mead based products and then one for like medium healing and mine healing so it's always good to have like a couple of these kicking about in a treasure chest or one of your storage containers kicking around at home so if you've got like a group of 20, just keep them in there. Like when later on, when you can start building mead, it's, uh, it's always good to have like a little a little bit of a back stock and it's always good to have some kicking about. So I even for myself, I, I, I haven't really gone into the whole making the mead thing. I haven't gone into that sort of part of my life yet in this game, but I've always got some kicking about. I've normally got like one or two of each item just so I know what I'm doing basically. All right, I think that basically wraps up the uh, the meadow biome. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video, and if you have, don't forget to let me know in the comment section. I'd love to hear your thoughts of this place, and it, are you one of these people that stick around in, a, in the meadow, or have you advanced into the further of the game and sort of built up your battlement so you do have a little bit more of a, a defensive streak, so to say? I want to say thank you very much for kicking by. It does mean a lot that some people have taken the time out to actually watch this, and it means a massive amount to myself. So thank you very much for kicking by. I'll see you all in another video. Peace out, have fun, and enjoy everything you guys do. I will be back here with a brand new video, live stream, or whatever else I do on this channel. Until then, guys, bye-bye for now.